All right, uh, let's uh, take a look at the, um, let's start talking about uh, Redux. All right, so you can uh, find the uh, content. Uh, here, uh, let's uh, talk. About, let's look at first at a very, very trivial example on Redux, so that we can talk about what the uh, what the concept is. All right, let's look at a trivial example. Okay, um, okay so so typically uh, we've been using a, uh, a design pattern, uh, the model view control design pattern, uh, where you have a back and forth communication between the uh, the user. Uh, generating events, uh, those, those events flowing through the uh, controller or the component, uh, going through a service, going back to the server, the server coming back uh, to, the, to the service, uh, and then you see an update of the state uh, to, to the user. Right, so, so this back and forth is, uh, has, has become uh, very popular. It's, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, we've been using it for, for quite a while. Uh, but there are other, there are other uh, alternatives that are somewhat equivalent. That perhaps some folks might, might uh, consider this to be just a, uh, a nomenclature uh, or renaming of some terms. Uh, but um, uh, but let's, let's take a look at uh, how, how re what the Redux is suggesting. Uh, what, uh, what Redux uh, suggests is that uh, uh, you have the following architecture. Right? The, the idea of Redux is that uh, you want to, uh, instead of having this back and forth, back and forth uh, of how, how the, uh, the state is manipulated, you know, me generating an event, going all the way down, down to, to, uh, um, to the model being manipulated, and then the model coming back and being rendered. Right? Ideally, we can simplify that and, and, and provide a, uh, a one-way uh, 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 um, event flow, right? uh, where, 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 the, um, uh, where, where the, the, the event handling happens just one way, this, the, the, the data gets, uh, gets, gets updated, and that's it, right? so to, to simplify that. So that's, that's one of the ideas. The second idea is that uh, instead of having uh, the state being shared amongst multiple components and, uh, and having to uh, propagate the state from a parent down to the children, the children through their children, and so on and so forth, uh, instead, it, uh, we, we, uh, uh, ideally, we would instead have a, a state of the state of the application exist in one single place right? and be accessible all throughout the application. Right. Ideally, you would have this one big JSON object that uh, you have downloaded from, from a server. Uh, you have a copy of that uh, uh, you know, cached in, on your, in your local um, client-side React component uh, application. Uh, and, and then it gets, it get that, that, uh, that JSON representation gets rendered in the, in the user interface. And then from anywhere in the application, you can then poke at, that, at, that, at different parts of, the, uh, of this state Right? And those, those, those changes to that state would be, then be reflected in the, uh, in the user interface, as opposed to having to you know, walk the, the, the um, you know, pull, push down all the states down to the children, from the children then navigate all the events back to the parent uh, and change the state. Instead, anybody should be able to access the, the state from anywhere right? and be then notified of what that new state uh, should be. Okay? Uh, that's that's, uh, that's a, a, second, a second idea. The, uh, uh, the, other th the other third idea that, uh, that uh, is introduced in, in Redux is that um, the, the, uh, the, the, state is never, the state is never actually mutated, right? as opposed to uh, what we see so far. Uh, typically, what, what you see in the applications that we have, uh, we, we make an event. The event flows into the data model. We change some state information, and then the state information then is rendered back to the client. Right? That's the, that's the, uh, 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 an, an obvious uh, implementation. Right? What, what Redux suggests is says, no. Uh, what you're going to do is that uh, there's one state, perhaps an initial state, and that state does not change. What you do instead is that uh, from that previous state, from that current state, you create a new state. Right? A new state that might be a copy of what it used to be plus some tweaks. Right, maybe I changed here something there uh, over there. I added something, or I removed something from an array, or I changed a particular property, but I didn't change the original state. Instead, I generate a brand new state based off of the first one, right? And and then I render this brand new state. So there's never a mutation of the state. There's always a generation of a new state, 
right? And in this, in this idea, uh, it says that I can, uh, the, the, uh, the events of the application, what they do is that they, they transfer or they, um, they transport the application from one state to another state to another state without destroying the previous states. You just recreate a brand new uh, state, right, that represents the current state of your application. Right? What this idea uh, allows you to, uh, to, to, to implement is the fact that you could, right, theoretically navigate backwards in time, right, to all previous states, right? You could render the application, right, at any state that has ever been created, right? You could do a rewinding of the states, right? So you could say like undo, 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 right? And you can just go back in time and just re-render the application at any other previous state that the application has ever been, which is a pretty cool idea, right? That the, that the whatever you're looking at at the application is always a rendering of the current state, whatever that state might be, right? You might have hundreds of states and you could put the application in any one particular state, right? And you could have maybe a tree of state of, of these states, right? Where you could perhaps walk backwards in time, and then maybe branch off and go off to another uh, branch of, of different state as you, you know, you undid uh, undid a whole bunch of things, and then you started um, um, modifying, changing the state, and going forward in time. Yes, right. So these these uh, all these uh, uh, states allow you to rewind, fast forward. And, you know, pretty pretty cool, uh, pretty cool concept. Okay. All right, so, so the, 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 the basic ideas here is that you have the, uh, a component uh, that generates a stream of events. It generates a stream as you, as you type, as you click, as you drag, as you press different buttons. Uh, it, uh, it generates events. Uh, and then you have, in, in between, you have what is called a dispatcher that is uh, responsible for handling those, 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 those events. Right? It's, it's somewhat what we, um, uh, what we would call our, our controller. Right, it kind of has this, almost the same, uh, the, the same um, uh, idea, right? That that, that handles uh, this uh, this event flow, right? So there's a dispatcher. Dispatcher t takes in the, these events and it invokes uh, what um, actions on the on what is called a reducer. A reducer is is um, uh, somewhat the uh, the the um, is going to be the responsible of generating the next state. Right, saying, okay, well, based on all these events that have been dispatched, right, re the reducer is going to compute the next state. It's going to say, okay, well, I was in this state, and these were the actions. And so you asked me to remove this or add this or modify something. I will create a brand new state off of the previous state with those modifications. But I will not throw away the previous state. That will still stay. Right? I'll create a brand new state, and that new state is then stored uh, in a uh, what is called a store, right? Uh, the, the store is uh, the representation, the the, uh, the the owner of of the current state plus any previous states that have ever been created. So the store uh, keeps track of the current state and any other previous state that have been generated, right? And typically we we render, we always render the current state, right? The the brand new state that's generated. That's the latest state, and that's what gets rendered. Okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so you first provide a, a, an initial state, right? And uh, either perhaps from an initial uh, reading of the database, right? You hit a, perhaps a, a service call, and this gives you the, the initial state of your application. And you, and you then populate that as, you've, as your initial state, right? And from there on, the new states get created as you interact with the application, as you click your way through uh, your application. And then a brand new state is created. Uh, yeah, well, the, service, the server is only aware of the current state of the application, right? The, uh, the, the, um, the tracking of all the states that have ever existed, it, it's a Redux-only uh, uh, feature, right? So it's, it's not stored in the database. The database doesn't know anything about any of these other states. Right? The Redux does, right? The store. The store has all these states, okay? Um, all right, so, uh, so let's... Um, uh, let's uh, let's uh, uh, play around and, uh, and and get started on a, on a on a trivial example. 
Uh, first, we'll need to install a couple of things. All right, so we're, gonna, we're going to uh, create a trivial uh, React uh, Redux example. So let's do that. Let's um, start a, um, a terminal. And let's see, let's uh, go into uh, web dev. Uh, let's go into 2018. And let's go into summer two. And let's, uh, let's go to experiments. And uh, let's uh, create a brand new application. And we'll, we'll call it the Trivial React Redux example. It's going to be a very generic uh, application, right? Uh, just to just to talk about the different concepts. And we'll need to install uh, two uh, two packages so that we'll have Redux available. Um, uh, first, we'll we'll install the the core Redux library. Right, that's common to uh, if, if you're if you're going to use Redux elsewhere on Angular or anywhere else, right? You still have you you need this a uh, core uh, library, right? Uh, and then there's a second library that is specific to React. Right, this is what binds Redux to uh, React, so you can use it from within React. So everybody needs to install this one, and then each uh, each framework needs to install their own version on how it binds to Redux. Okay. Um, all right, so let's uh, go into the trivial example and let's make sure that this uh, uh, install correctly. Okay, so there's our trivial example. So trivial, it doesn't do anything yet. Um, all right, so let's uh, install Redux. Let's uh, we can stop this and let's uh, install Redux. There we go. So it's going to download and install the Redux. And then we'll need to also install uh, React Redux. All right. Uh, and we're going to throw away the content in the source. So let's open up that, uh, that um, um, that project we just created with uh, our favorite IDE. So let's close this project. And let's open the project we just created on their examples. Web dev, summer two. Experiments, Trivial React Redux example. And we're first going to throw away all our content here to start from scratch. Um, all right, so uh, let's, uh, uh, the one of the first things we'll have to do is first create an index for the entry point of the application. All right, so inside of uh, index.js, We'll create our entry point. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll have to uh, import React and React DOM. That, that, that doesn't change. We still have to, uh, we need those two things, right? As, as always, we'll need those two, those two libraries. Uh, and we can, uh, we can go ahead and maybe create a, um, a, um, a component that we can render. Yeah, we'll call it sum app. So let's uh, create a, uh, a sum app uh, component. Or is it sum app? Yeah, so we'll do a const sum app, uh, which uh, will render maybe, we'll come back as uh, maybe just um, h1 sum app, sum application. And we'll just render it. We'll say uh, uh, React DOM dot render, and we'll render uh, some app, and we'll render it in document dot get elements by ID and in root. 
OK? And we can start that up. We can run it, npm start, and verify that we have some app. There we go. So we have the some, some app. All right, so this is, this is nothing new. Um, all right, so let's see. What do we need to add uh, the, what, what do we need for React uh, Redux? OK, we'll need these two things, these, these two libraries. Right? Uh, what, uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to use the, a provider. A new, this, uh, this is going to be a new component that is provided by the React Redux right? uh, that ties our React application. It ties it to the concepts in, the, um, in, uh, in, in, in Redux. Right? It's going to tie this store. It's going to provide this store so that we can read from this store and render in our application whatever the store tells us. The store is going to keep track of the latest state. Yes? So the provider is going to provide us our application with the store. Right? And the store contains what? The state. Right? And the, our application is, is responsible for rendering that state. The reducer is going to generate the states and put them in the store. Now it's going to take a brand, uh, it's, going to, it's going to look at the old state, it's going to generate a new state, and it's going to put it in the store. And the provider will provide that store to our application so that we can render it. Yes? OK. Oops. OK, so let's, uh, let's uh, 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 grab uh, Redux. Uh, create store is a, one of the um, uh, uh, functions uh, that are declared in the re by the Redux library that generates or instantiates these stores. Right? We'll have to instantiate a store right? that's going to be used by Redux to generate all these states. Right? And the provider will provide them. The connect is going to be the glue. It's going to, it's going to glue the, the store and it's going to glue it into our uh, application. Say, hey, uh, hey Redux, uh, provide that store, provide it to this React application. Right? It's going to be the glue between these two. All right, so let's grab these, uh, these uh, uh, two libraries. And let's add it right here. Oops. Sometimes my copy doesn't work. Paste. There we go. Um, all right. Uh, nothing has happened yet. No, we haven't done anything. Uh, let's, uh, we can, um, let's, uh, let's create a, a brand new component. Uh, that we can add to our uh, to our application. So let's uh, let's create that has a single button, right? So let's create a component. So cons some component. And right now we let's uh, let's render it as just a button. So button uh, maybe um, a div, uh, and this will be h2 uh, some component. Uh, that the only thing that it has is a button. Click me. Uh, equals. Uh, and some app can render that component. Can render the some component. Okay? So that renders as just the some app being the parent, and it has a child component that the only thing that it has is a button. Everybody okay? All right. Uh, and we can have event handlers, right? We can say that on click, right, we can call something like uh, alert click me. Right, so that if I click on click me, it opens up that alert. All right? Nothing new there. Everybody okay? All right? So what we want to do, what we want to do is follow this this architecture. Right? Instead of us maintaining, instead of the components maintaining their state, okay, we're not going to use this dot state ever again. Right? So that uh, you know, any pain that you've had so far with this dot state, uh, you won't have that pain. You'll have other pains. <laughs> uh, we'll maintain state some other way. All right? So our components would no longer have to be class. Uh, and then extend React that component because we have to maintain our own state. 
right? We, because each component now are, are going to be completely stateless. The components will have no idea that they're maintaining any state whatsoever. Right? It will always be a functional. The components will be functional. The components will be given the state, and their only responsibility is to render whatever is given to them. That's another uh, reason why Redux is so popular, is that, uh, is that if a component is stateless, it's so much easier to debug, right? because you can just give it a hard-coded state and see how it behaves, and make sure that it's behaving the way it's supposed to behave. Uh, but if a component changes its state over time, it's so much harder to, 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 to debug, right? because you don't know what, what state am I currently in, and I need to consider multiple uh, different states, and I have to you know, click the application to make it go into that particular state. Right? It's such hard to, to, to debug. So Redux has become very, very popular because it makes debugging so much easier. You can test a component individually, you know, uh, independent of all other components. Right? So testing becomes so much uh, easier. Okay? Uh, so yeah, so, so all our components are all going to be stateless from now on. Right? They're going to receive the state as an argument, and they just have to render that state. Right? But they will not maintain their own state. Instead, when you, when you have an event, when you have an event, instead they should just notify somebody that, hey, somebody click this button. I have no idea what to do with it. Right? It is no longer going to be uh, the, the component's responsibility to handle any events. Right? The components will not handle an events anymore. Instead, they're going to notify a centralized dispatcher. They're going to say, hey, dispatcher, somebody click this button. I have no idea what to do with it. You handle it. All right? So that's going to be the, the, the architecture. Components will now send their events to a dispatcher. Everybody okay? All right. OK, so um, how are they going to know to who to send it to? Well, that also is going to be a, uh, a, a functional. You know, somebody is going to pass the component a function they can call right, to notify the dispatcher that something happened. Okay, somebody clicked this button. I have no idea what to do with it. So somebody's going to pass it a dispatcher uh, function that we can call and say, hey, I'm dispatching this event. Let's, uh, let's do that. So the component is going to receive as argument a dispatch. So the component, the component is going to receive as argument a dispatch function. Somebody's going to pass it. Who? The Redux uh, framework right, is going to pass it this function. So they can call back. Right, so what, what its responsibility is now is, uh, instead, right, here's the button. So on the click, what it should do is just dispatch. Call the dispatcher. Right? It should not handle it here. Right? It is not the component's responsibility to handle anything here. It will just call the dispatch. Who are you going to call? Uh, now the dispatch. Right? It needs to be able to somehow identify what happened. What did they click? Right? They need to be able to distinguish that you click this button versus this other button. Right? They need to uniquely identify the events somehow. Okay? They need to be able to pass something as an argument saying what happened, what button was clicked. And the way they're going to uh, uh, um, notify what happened is by using a JSON object that has to have at least this one field. At least this one field. It can have other fields as arguments, parameters, but at least it has to have a type right, that, that uniquely distinguishes this event from other events. Yes? Right? And we can say, and this could be just a string, something unique, you know, some event or some action, some event or some action, whatever. Something that I know is unique. Usually, these, uh, these uh, event names, uh, the whole team has agreed upon what these event names should be called. Right? They make a dictionary of all possible events 
that, that could ever happen in your application, right? They probably store it in a particular file, right? And they're listed there as constants. And everybody draws from these constants. Yes? If, uh, if there's a new type of event, uh, we all meet again, and we try to agree on what this event uh, should be, what should it be called, and sh what, what, it's, uh, what its meaning is. OK, so there is some event. Everybody OK? All right, who provides this dispatch function? Who provides this dispatch function? Well, the, the, uh, the, it's provided by the, uh, by the um, uh, by, by the, uh, uh, by Redux, uh, by using the uh, connect function that is also provided by Redux. So the way this works is that we are going to wrap, we wrap the, uh, oh, some container. Where's my container? Did I create my container already? Okay, no, yeah, there it is. We're going to create a container. We're going to wrap our component inside of a container and, and we're going to uh, use the, uh, the connect function, that it's a Redux uh, uh, function, which is going to be the responsible to pass it the dispatch function. Right? So we create a container, and we call the connect on, the, on, the, um, uh, uh, on that component that we want to receive the, 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 uh, the dispatch function. So we declare right here, it says some container is equal connect. Connect, notice connect is uh, from the Redux, uh, from the Redux library, right? It takes us argument, the component that is going to receive the dispatch function, right? And it wraps it in some new container. The container is then what gets rendered, right? Uh, so uh, we have, we'll have a container in a minute. Um, the container, the container is what uh, is going to um, receive the, uh, the 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 store, the store for 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 rendering. And we'll do that in a minute. Um, all right. So so this is what's going to be dispatched. This is what's going to be dispatched. Uh, the dispatcher, right? When you when you call the dispatch, what happens is that all those all those dispatch events are going to be sent over to be handled by a reducer. Right, the reducer is going to receive now all these actions, right, all these events. Right? And, and it is going to be responsible for generating the states okay, based on the events that you send it. Okay? Although we don't, we don't call them events, uh, we call them actions. I'm using some of the jargon uh, in, uh, in, in Redux. Right? We say actions. Some action occurred. Right, they clicked on this particular button. Right, some action occurred. Um, all right, so so now this dispatch is going to be dispatched to a uh, a reducer. A re the reducer is going to be responsible for interpreting that action and generating a new event to be rendered. Okay. All right. So how do we generate a reducer? How do we, the reducer is 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 generated using uh, a a plain all a, um, uh, a, a constant object or, or function, right? Uh, that has to declare at least two arguments, right? So let's create a brand new uh, reducer, constant uh, sum reducer. Uh, notice how I am using very generic names uh, specific to. I mean, we're not building anything specific. In a minute, we'll build something specific. But first, I'm doing a very very generic, uh, plain vanilla. Um, so this will be a generic function, a generic function, right? Uh, that has to uh, accept two arguments. It has to accept two arguments. It has to accept the the current state. You know, where are we now? Right? And it has to accept an action. What happened? Right? Meaning, I know where we are. And based on this action, I will generate a new state. OK? All right, that's what a reducer does. And here, the reducer encapsulates the logic by which we generate new events based on actions. Right? You're, if the state is that I have no modules, and the action is to add a module, well, I'll create a new module object, and I'll push it onto the array so that the new state 
now has an array with at least one module. Yes? Uh, if the state is that I have 10 modules and that the action is to remove the third module, well, then the new state will be uh, the, li the original list of modules minus the module that I am deleting. Make sense? Right? And that logic of how the new states get generated is encapsulated by the reducer. Yes? Are we okay? Um, all right, so, um, so we have a state can have, a, the state can have an initial state. They can have an optional initial state. So this could be a string perhaps, some initial state. Um, as a, as an, as it could be an object, uh, some, uh, some uh, attribute, some uh, property uh, equal to some value. So this could be initial state. Uh, and then an action, the, the action. Okay? Uh, so internally, we're going to have one big switch statement. Right? And that switch statement is going to look at all the possible actions. Right? The action might be add a module, update a module, remove a module, add a topic, remove a topic, edit this, edit that. There could be tons of actions. Yes? And typically, we don't just have just one reducer. Typically, we have multiple reducers. We, have, we would typically have one reducer per logical unit. For instance, a reducer that only knows about modules a reducer that only knows about lessons, a reducer that only knows about topics. All right? But that's only so that we can you know, get it straight in our heads. If you have hundreds of actions, ideally you want to break them up into smaller modules so you can handle them. Yes? But one reducer would just work just fine. Right? We would create multiple reducers only to deal with complexity. Right? Uh, but right now, let's just have one reducer. So the reducer will be just one big switch statement that's going to look at uh, the action dot type. What did we do? What, the, what was the action? What was the event? And if it's one thing, we do one thing. If it's another, we do another thing. Yes? Uh, so this could be that the, uh, that the type uh, was equal to some action. And you can have two buttons, right? We can have one button, uh, you know, action action with action one, right, this would be maybe action one. And maybe you can have another button with action number two. Action number two. Uh, and then in the switch, you could have, compare it against either action one, right, or another case where you have ac action two. Yes? Uh, and you can have tons of these components all over the place. Yes? Yes. They're with unique, u they're unique actions. Yes? Yep. You can namespace them, uh, uh, put them in different namespaces. If you want to use the same name, uh, you can put them in different spaces. Right? Uh, so you can have, uh, you know, add. Uh, so you can have multiple ads, but one could be under the modules namespace, the other one could be under the topics namespace, it could be under the courses namespace. So it may have different meanings, right? Uh, and, and, and also, they'll be, they'll, typically, they'll be handled by specific reducers. So you have a reducer that handles this namespace and another reducer that handles this other namespace. Yep. Um, all right, so excellent. So um, uh, all right, so what can we do? Uh, here we can do, for now, let's do just an alert. Alert and say action one. Action one happened, occurred. Occur. Can't spell today. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh, there we go. And, or action two happened. Okay. Uh, all right. Excellent. Let's see. What else? So right now we're not generating any new event. Right. I only just want to make sure we're even getting there. Okay? We're not going to generate a new event. Not yet. Not just yet. We're only just 
uh, making sure we are even hitting this. All right. Uh, so let's uh, first do, let's continue with the plumbing. And the plumbing of just sticking everything together that the thing flows, that's the hardest part in React, in, in Redux. First, putting, getting the plumbing right, right? That this generates the dispatch and that flows into the, uh, you have to connect it to this component and then it flows into the reducer and then the reducer, that first part of, of doing the plumbing is the hardest part. Right? Once, it's, once the plumbing is connected, uh, typically you don't have to uh, touch it ever again, right? You can just, uh, you know, just, just stick to just on the reducer, generating the different handlings of generating the new event of the new, new states. Yes? Okay. Um, all right, let's, uh, let's finish up. Um, so we have the reducer. We have the reducer. We're going to create the store. We're going to create the store uh, right here. We're going to instantiate the new store. And the store, again, we're going to use one of Redux's functions to create the store. It says uh, this reducer will be the one that uh, feeds states into the store. Right? And so this gives us a reference to the store that the reducer is responsible for. Right? The reducer is going to feed events into that store. Okay? Okay? Uh, and then we need to provide that store uh, to our application. The application is going to uh, grab, grab that and is gonna, we're going to feed it in there. Right? And that is the responsibility of the, um, of the provider. So in the sum app, we're going to uh, we're going to take that store, right? And that's going to we're going to so the provider declares an, an attribute called store. We declare what the store is, and then it's going to be fed into our container, and then we can finally render the the application itself. Okay, all right. Woo. Let's go back here. It's <laughs> action one and action two. There it is. We clicked on action one. It's being dispatched. It's, go, it's reaching the reducer. The reducer is not generating any events. <laughs> okay? It's only just popping up that alert. Right? But it's connected. You know, the plumbing uh, worked all the way down to the, the, to the reducer or action number two. It hasn't generated any events, I mean, any, uh, any state information just yet. At least we know it's flowing in the right direction. Um, all right, so the next thing is that you know, now that we know that the, the, the events and actions are flowing from the component to re the reducer, now let's look at the reducer actually doing something, like generating maybe a state that can be actually rendered. Yes? All right, so let's take a look at that. Uh, we need to, um, basically what we need to do is that because these components are now going to be stateless, meaning they're not maintaining any state whatsoever, right? Uh, they need to be told what to render. You know, what do I render? Right? Somebody has to pass it the data, saying, hey, this is what you need to render, because it has no idea what to render. Right? It needs to be told, right? because it's not maintaining any state whatsoever. And that's the whole point. Right? We do not want these to be stateless. Uh, I'm sorry. We don't want these to be stateful, that we want to be stateless. Everything that they render is passed in. And who's going to pass it in? Somehow we need to grab it from that store. Somehow we need to grab it from the store and feed it back into the component. Saying, hey, the state changed. And by the way, it's your responsibility to draw or update right, or display this piece of the state. Right? And here's the state. Yes? Right, so so we, we, we did one we, we went we, we did the plumbing one way, right, from the component down to the reducer. Right now let's start the plumbing the other way. How do we get the state from the from the store back into the component for rendering? All right, let's take a look at that and we'll do that next.